Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of From the Bottom Up. Yeah, in preparing for this show, or any any of the Sunday shows, there's a little bit of a, a cycle, and the more I practice, I need to do nothing and just watch and see how things play out. I'm starting to notice these cycles of the night before. Oh, what's my show going to be about? Jesus says something like, it's not time yet. I don't listen. I plan something. It has to get deleted. Then the next morning I have a beautiful meditation, sinking into the moment, and then something comes through, and then I still think, oh, well what can I what can I add to this? What kind of clips? What can I how can I support all this? And then inevitably, because you know, you put these things on YouTube, you can't play any clips. So it's like a deletion process and then and then I have this deep meditation and then this quiet and, and this point comes in where like a thread, like you see what's going to play out and your only job is to not interfere, to actually just almost play your part in the script that was written long ago and, and you have no control. And I feel like, yeah, in some ways that's the focus of this episode, and I've got a guest with me, a new guest I've never had on before. Frances Sue is in Mexico, or looks like she's in Utah with that beautiful background. Hi, Frances. Hi. <laughs> yeah, because she had um, she had something that was starting to bubble through her, or come through her in the last week, and she may or may not have posted it in a video or YouTube, but gave it an attempt and. And in my meditation this morning, I heard to invite her on and that she, she has some things to share. And, and interestingly enough, last night, before I knew Francis was coming on, I pulled a lot of quotes from a section called The Little Willingness because I'm really inspired by I need do nothing, like not just as a concept or an idea, but in the moment, oh wow, I need, I need do nothing. And this spaciousness and this clarity that comes in just feels very profound for me for someone who's been so willing to be done through and be active and and actually the most helpful thing like he says is is it would be much I can't even read it from I need do nothing I need do nothing is a statement of allegiance a truly undivided loyalty believe it for just one instant and you will accomplish more than is given a century of contemplation or a struggle against temptation I'm looking for the other part. Doesn't say it, but he said you would you would be better off right now just thinking of I need do nothing than what it is you should do. And this whole ministry has been so focused on on guidance because I think for a lot of the journey, you know, or a lot of people, they don't even believe they can hear guidance. Different course teachers will even say that, and we just keep pounding that message. No, you you can hear guidance, and here's the demonstration of it. And yet, at some point, you hear in the journey where people start getting all this pressure and anxiety, like, what do I need to do to get out of the panic? And actually, it just comes to this place where Jesus says, well, you know, you need to do anything. In fact, there's nothing you can do. And so, from the little willingness section, I wanted to read. <laughs> the holy instant is the result of your determination to be holy. It is the answer. The desire and the willingness to let it come precede its coming. You prepare your mind for it only to the extent of recognizing that you want it above all else. It is not necessary that you do more. Indeed, it is necessary you realize that you cannot do more. Do not attempt to give the Holy Spirit what he does not ask, or you will add the ego to him and confuse the two. Trust not your good intentions, they are not enough, but trust implicitly your willingness, whatever else may enter. Concentrate only on this and be not disturbed <laughs> that shadows surround it. That is why you came. If you could come without them, the shadows, 
you would not need the holy instant. Come to it not in arrogance, assuming that you must achieve the state its coming brings with it. The miracle of the holy instant lies in your willingness to let it be what it is. So I was talking with Suzanne Sullivan this morning because she stopped by on her way to the monastery and she was just sharing this example of, before I even read her this quote, how her whole, almost her whole life there's been this desire to wake up and she's had these, I don't know if she'd call them revelatory experiences, but this experience of way beyond the body and she's always been trying to go back to that and with, with a determination and a drive. And recently she's just accepted that the happy dream is really what's for her and her goal and this flash out desire you know has dropped from her mind and the peace and the love tr that is taking over her heart instead of these good intentions to go for God it just was like a summation of this whole thing and just this relaxation coming in and and the reason I wanted Francis on this show was because I got this feeling and just talking with her for a few minutes today I didn't want to go too far into it because I wanted this to be a live conversation with us but I could I could really feel like she's having this experience with with um, finishing the movie. I think it's finished now. Her part is finished, basically, and now it's got to go into sound. <laughs> and parts that really don't have a lot of involvement with her except directing. But she said this movie has changed her life, and she's a new person because of it, and has had some realizations around this stuff that I'm just reading about right now. So I thought, rather than being hypothetical and just word, let's... Let's really hear some practical examples of how this has worked for her to see that really you can't control anything. So, yeah, I don't know, Francis, if you have anything in your mind right now you'd want to start with. Because I have questions at some point. But. Yeah, I mean, I was um, trying the last few days because there's such a strong experience and realization I was trying to make a movie, I mean, make a video to share with, put on the YouTube channel, but it feels very unclear. It feels very unclear how, how to put in words. That's what I said to Jason, I, I'll give it a try today, but I didn't feel like I could do it before. And the, the title I was going to do with the video that I've, I'm not putting on, um, <laughs> I, I was going to call it how to use any project for awakening um, because I feel like the lessons that, that I learned is really transferable to, to pretty much everything and not just for projects but for everything. And I think what I realized, one thing that I realized is that like any time when we touch a project or give our heart and soul to something, it ceases to be just a product. It, it actually becomes our own expression. You know, the degree of how much you want it to be your expression probably varies, but inevitably it becomes an expression and it, it is not even like a personal expression so much, but it's an expression of the heart, the love in your heart and the spirit in you that, that is funneled through. Any project is like that. So, yeah, so I feel, um, then what I learned, I mean, like I can jump to the, to the conclusion that I really, one thing that I learned is you, you cannot judge an expression. And in the end, I learned it in a hard way because I feel from the beginning, you know, I have, I didn't really know the end result, what it will be and what story we're going to tell. And maybe even whether it's going to come about, like I, I, I wasn't completely sure. But once I realized it, this inspiration in me has carried me for the last year and a half, is going to finish, I realize there is some kind of standard inside and I need to meet that standard. This product needs to meet that standard, like some kind of quality. 
And yeah, I, I don't even know where to start. Maybe it's better you ask me questions, Jason. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah, I, well, when we started talking this morning, you mentioned one thing. You said that you're going to have to give the project over to Soren tomorrow. And there was something there. There was I didn't really go into it, but I don't know if it was an emotion or a thought. Yeah, maybe you could elaborate on what that emotion is. That, like, are you ready to give it over to him? Do you fully have you fully released it to give it to him? Yeah, I mean the thing is, I Soren is going to help with tidy up the sound, and um, before I reach this pro, uh, this this point, there was so many, there was so many try and errors and, you know, last time when you and I talk about this was on the online retreat and I said after the online retreat I would redo the movie pretty much with this new inspiration because the year and a half that I tried and tried, it just didn't work and then I actually finished the movie in 10 days from that point on very, very quickly. This is one thing I learned, that it doesn't take time. It doesn't matter the scale of the project. It really does not take time. I finished in 10 days. And, and after I finished it, I felt really good about it. I felt good about absolutely everything, every second of, of the movie. And what I did from that point on was I said, I'm finished. And I'm, I'm going to pass it on to, to have some tidy up with transitions and stabilization and all of that. But then when, when I got a more polished version back, I couldn't feel the project anymore. And it was very devastating. I couldn't feel a thing, so much so that I couldn't even watch it. And yet it, it, it is polished. My eyes feel pleased. <laughs> you know, much better, but my heart is gone. And, and I was sitting with it for a long, long, long time. I didn't know. It's more the feeling is I don't know how to judge someone else's expression because regardless someone else, when they touch something, like even if to shorten the scene for a second or extend the scene for, for a second, my eyes couldn't tell the difference. It's the exact same mm -hmm. movie to me. But it's, it got someone else's feeling and way of looking at life. And they think this should be expressed this way. And when it, when it came back to me, I couldn't believe. I couldn't do anything anymore. I couldn't say, it's good, let's move on. Or I don't like this. It was like staring at something. Yeah, and it was like very profound. So then I... You know, very reluctantly, JP was saying, maybe you have to revert back to your previous version. I said, no, that is a, a less polished version. That's a, not as good as this one. I want it to be good. I want it to meet the standard I have. I want it to be polished. Okay. All right. I'll just continue on. Francis is frozen, so they might be having some technical difficulties down there. But yeah, what, one of the things that Francis was, was sharing with me with that parable around trying to, you know, give these, the movie to someone else, Peter, to finish it. And actually, in some ways, even for the year and a half before that, you know, we'd have these big ideas and these visions, and I would say, well, I can do it. I could just finish it for you, or I'll, I'll edit it, and I would do it, and Inevitably, either I couldn't finish, or when she looked at it, it wasn't the deep healing, you know, wasn't resonating. And so, so here she is given this to Peter, and it comes back, and she can't tell with the eyes whether anything has changed at all. But she's lost her heart; she's completely lost her heart, and it looks like yeah. she's back now. So, yeah, and I, it was very devastating because I know Peter's version is better. I just can tell; it's more stabilized, it's more tight. It's more pleasing to the eye, and yet it's not me. And then, like, was devastating to accept. I have to accept less. I have to say, 
you know, this is this is me and this less. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I don't I don't even fully know the emotion because because I realize that it's not like I, I can choose any different. It's like I have no choice. Like nothing can be different. You know, if it is like even a second different than what I I see or what I originally thought to be, everything is is gone for me and I couldn't decide I couldn't decide anything. I couldn't decide, let's do this, let's do that. It's gone. It's, so I just stare at like, this is not my expression. It's not my project. I don't know what to do. So that's what I learned. I think one thing is, you know, I have to, this is not even like a choice. I feel like it changed me because in that moment, profound moment, I realized, oh, that this project for me or any project is that it is, whether it's true to you or not, it is never going to be about whether it's better or not, or right or wrong. Because I have two versions, one better, one truer, <laughs> and I cannot go with the better version. And I, I trust me how much I have tried to make it better in form or in anybody else's standard throughout the last year and a half. And in the end, I come back to accept that, you know, the one that is true to me may not be the best and may not be... And, and the most amazing thing is it cannot be touched at all. And I thought, how can I, the first touch I have is perfect. Like, how can that be? I don't even have that kind of confidence or or things to say, like the first touch that I did, it's, it's perfect. But then it isn't perfect in any way if, if we, we judge it, but it is true. And, and that is, that's the, only, that's the only thing that I can go with right now. Like I have to go with what is true, what feels me. And yeah, and then I feel like nothing could be different. I couldn't make it any different. Nobody could make it any different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, when you say what is true, you know, it's like what you're saying is that it, it lines up as it, it came from your heart. Like you could feel it in the moment and whatever it was was an expression of that truth. So if it changes in any way with what the world would call better, meaning higher pixels, better quality, a smoother transition, um, even maybe you'll go through this with the sound, it's, it's actually changing the reflection and is undoing the idea that perfection is in form at all. Yeah, and I, I think the, the reason I felt the Spirit give me a movie to make to undo whatever that's there that I can't even see it's because I, I had no idea or a skill to make a movie. I don't know how to do it. Um, and inevitably, I, I accepted, okay, this movie is going to be about my expression, but I have no experience in expressing through pictures. I feel I express through words. Uh, I don't know how to express through pictures. So the whole process is for me to find the way to do that. And it's not logical, it, you have to bypass logic completely. I can't say this picture, I put it there because. I have no because. And it was completely because just that it lit up my heart and this place mm -hmm. is right. This length mm -hmm. feels it, I feel it. This picture follows next because I feel it. There's no reason. So in the end, I can't say it, this is truly my expression, and it shows me this and this. And nothing is is clear in terms of black and white and logic. All that I can say is, maybe it is my expression purely because the way it was done was through what resonated with my heart so deeply, and I didn't let it compromise. A lot of the things, the scenes, and the the, 
the scenario that resonated with me, I cannot explain clearly to you, to the audience on screen. And I have to make a decision to, to make it clear and explain, explainable, or just to put the deepest moment for me out there. And I chose the second. So, so in the end, this is just a, an expression. And that's why maybe anything that is touched changes the expression, even how long the scene is. You know, mm -hmm. if it is one second shorter, my emotion mm -hmm. is not settled yet, and then it changes to the next scene, then I would feel mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not me anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah, and it's not, I think one of the questions you were struggling with, or it struggles the wrong word, but was this all just like, okay, is it control? You know, if someone changes it, is this feeling that I feel, is that control or is it, and I just need to like step back and let go, which is a, a, most of the journey. Step, I will step back and let him lead the way and not control. Yeah, yet, this yeah. project is just not that for me. I mean, because I know from the beginning, I would hope someone do it all for me and I don't have to direct, I don't have to. So after the whole month of directing on site, I was very happy to give it to Soren to edit. And Soren was frustrated because nothing he touched when it comes back to me, I was happy with. And he was like, how? Yeah, it's like there's nothing. And in the end, I have to sit down in front of the computer and put together scene for scene completely in my own hands. Like nobody can do it. And I, I really did not learn that until now I can look back and say, this is all for me to do it. I can't, even in any situation, like for Peter, it was the same. I know Peter is an amazing graphic designer. Anything he does, I feel is way better than I can even imagine. Mm -hmm. And I said, Peter, now is your touch. Just do your magic touch. And when he did it, I don't know what to do. Like it was good, but it's not me. Something is lost. So. Yeah. So you're talking about tomorrow giving the, the sound to, to Soren. That's an, also a very interesting thing because, you know, summer I don't really know anything about sound. I can't tell a sound is good or bad or loud or not too loud. So I know at, at this point I'm going to pass it on to Soren. And then um, last few days I just had, I just thought, you know, I, this back and forth changes so much before I give it to Soren, I better just watch it again and see whether there's anything else I can improve. There's like still this like, just in case of something I can still improve. And I took down three pages of notes of the, the tiny little touch. And then when I look back, all three pages are sounds. There's not a single thing about the picture. And all the sound was about what I want the sound to be, this, this part, this part. And I thought, I never had any thoughts. When did that even happen to me? Suddenly my mind just started to download all this instruction about sound right now, not in the last year and a half, not something I even noticed for the last hundred times of viewing. It's all coming to me right now. So it feels like truly like I, I don't really need to be ahead of the spirit and I don't mm -hmm. I don't need to judge him mm -hmm. and and yet I don't really understand why it still all come to me like I can't give it to anyone well you've you tried from the beginning even when you know I remember it goes way back even when we had to order some kind of hard drives and you're like what do you think and I I don't know, I shared some thoughts or something, but I, something in me was really firm, like, you're the director, do you know you're the director? And you're like, well, if I'm the director, then I need to think about these things or something. I don't know what, how you said it, but it was like, okay, so you became the director. Then the whole team got gathered, you end up there in the, what's that place we were working in? The chapel. You know, we're in the chapel and, you know, I had, had lots of experience with working with groups and stuff and you were happy for me to just do things, but it wasn't, it wasn't working, and I was like, I think you have to work with this group, and you're like, okay, you know, like, it's just every step along the way, every time, because my lesson was, instead of stepping into leadership, 
was to step out and support you and trust that you'd have it. And any ounce of toe, you'd be like happy for me to take whatever, but over and over. Like, I, I, I'm very happy to say I, haven't, I don't know any of this. Whatever you guys feel, I mean, there's a certain point I, I wasn't like that. I was at the beginning of the phase of this directing, I was kind of, okay, take it on. But after that, when we reach editing and post production, I was like, whoever have any feedback, please. But it just didn't go well at all. Yeah. How did that feedback thing go for you? Well, I think it is the same thing. You know, I've, I, I kept a journal along the process even three months before I started, we started this project. And at that point, when the team were coming, um, I wrote in my journal that I feel this movie is going to be undoing self-concept for absolutely everybody that is involved. And right now, whoever that is showing up in, inside the movie, you watch their self-concept get dismantled. That's like what this movie is about. But even for myself, um, I think you know, inevitably, if there is any goal that is tied to the end result, that, that is still the self-concept because I want it to, to look this way. I want to, to bring some kind of sense of achievement or something. I don't even know what it is that I can define. But anything that is tied to anything but this moment, you know, I'm doing it because this is what my heart is calling me right now. Any of that would be because of a self-concept. And at this point, I just look back and I can say, yes, I didn't know that any conflicting goals I had was revealed. I wanted people to tell me what will make a good movie, because I didn't know. And any feedback I got about how to make a better movie eventually um, went head on, head to head with my own goal of wanted this to be true to myself. Mm -hmm. So I, I, mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't move forward until I, you know, I choose one of the two goals. It's interesting because you, you know, we talk about everything's a backdrop, right? And, and then it's for awakening. But in the beginning, everyone really doesn't know what that means. And they, it's a backdrop, meaning, oh yeah, mend the fence, make a movie, fix something. And somehow, somewhere, I'll get some awakening in this. Whereas what you're describing is if you at all went in the touch of a backdrop being a real backdrop, as opposed to everything was literally for awakening, if you ever thought for the tiniest second you're making a movie, it was over for you, like you. I can't move forward. Any kind of decision, because there are so many decisions. Do I keep this scene? And if this scene, if I ask people, do you think it's a good scene? inevitably the implied goal is for the movie. Everybody will be giving me feedback. And if I go along with that, it just gone really bad. My heart will get lost in no time. I would have to come back, rewind to that very same moment and ask again, what is that that my heart is saying and what is that feels true to me? Then I would re re redecide again again and again and again to wash all this desire to make a better movie or a movie that people would approve of or would like, gave me any, any kind of sense of achievement, whatever. Everything would have to go. And that's part of the reason I feel like it changed me because I, you know, it's not like I didn't try. I really, I really tried everything and come back to this point and then remake absolutely every single decision based on only what feels true to the spirit in me. Then I realized I would never have to do, go down that route again. And you don't ever go, have to go down that route again. You can just get lost in your inspiration in this moment and, and let that take you as far as it can. And don't worry about where it's going and don't worry about what people would say. 
don't ever worry about whether it will get finished. Just like let it all go, because I can guarantee you, if you don't go that route, you will eventually after a big detour. <laughs> well, you know, this is what, because I was reading these quotes again this morning before, and I thought this totally applied to you, what you're going through with this movie or what happened with this movie. Your difficulty with the holy instant arises from your fixed conviction that you are not worthy of it. And what is this but determination to be as you would make yourself? So another way to word that would be to, and what is this but the determination to make the movie as you think would serve the public, you know, would be another way of, of wording that line. So in preparing for the holy instant, do not attempt to make yourself holy to be ready to receive it. That is but to confuse your role with God's. It is not needful that I make it ready for him. It's not needful that I figure out how to make this movie for him, but only that I do not interfere with his plan to restore it to me, my own awareness of my readiness. I do not interfere with his plan to just work through me in a way that keeps my heart alive. I need add nothing to his plan, but to receive it, I must be willing not to substitute my own in place of it. <laughs> it was just like, when I was reading this, I could not help but think of your movie. And that is all. Add more. So get someone else to make it perfect. Oh, I'm not sure if I trust myself. Bring their plan in. And you will merely take away the little that is asked. Remember, you made guilt and that your plan for the escape from guilt has been to bring atonement to it and make salvation fearful. And it is only fear that you will add if you prepare yourself for love. It is only fear you will add if you don't trust what it is that's coming through and think you need help from other people or, or from the world. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it was just like every line was being reinterpreted in my mind through this movie. So it was a very practical, do only this, do only this. And any time you added more out of a sense of worthiness was when the guilt was running the show. Yeah, and also the end result. Wanted the, the result to be a little bit more polished. That's what I was going through. Like wanted to, just to get shot, shots to be steady instead of shaky, you know. I couldn't even do that. I couldn't, I couldn't change that, you know. I, don't, I can't describe why. I mean, I don't feel like, okay, so this is bad because I have to accept the last version. It's not that, it's more the profoundness that, that none of it is about a better or, f or worse in form. No, none of it you can judge. None of it you can choose. You cannot direct the form. You cannot make it better or worse or any different. You can only let your heart be manifested or pour out and however it, it looks in shape and size, and it is. And there's no change in it. Mm -hmm. How is that different from, like, when new people come into the community and, you know, we ask them if they're not completely happy to just listen and follow as part of, or, you know, accept the function that's given them, and it doesn't seem like yeah. they have a lot. I did that too, and it was essential. I think it is essential. It, all of this prepared me for the moment now to be able to accept, because I, I can tell you the realization, the, the real profoundness of this whole thing is, is enormous empowerment. Like I could sit here and say, my expression, however it felt, is is true and and however it is is done there is no consultation needed there is no wishy-washy there is no standard from the external world i need to apply that kind of confidence that i felt after that moment i've never felt in my whole life that kind of i feel that empowerment and confidence is what this is all about you in the end, you know, at the beginning, you have to be humble and realize, I don't know. And I, I have been run and 
and governed and controlled by this voice that caused me pain, then now I have to step out of it and you know, be humble and follow. But in the end, it comes back to you claim your power inside. How do you, how do you know the right moment for that when it's not, I'm tired of listening to these people and I'm going to claim my power. I mean, maybe I just gave away the answer right there. But. I don't think it is. It, it can be, it can be asked how, or it can be answered in in this kind of way because that is still inevitably the ego wants to know or decide. This when when it's time for you to 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 find your power, you will. The means will be provided and you will feel the, the empowerment. But mm -hmm. I don't think it is, can be controlled. You know, you can't change mm -hmm. this, this, this journey. Like I, I said, the whole learning is nothing can be changed. You can't change anything. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things you started to explore with me on the call, and I said, hold on, I, tell me on the show was that you felt like somehow this was bringing you into a realization that nothing could be different, somehow. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's, that's what I realized, but I can't tell you how I get there. <laughs> I'll tell you step by step, like this happened that lead me to get there, but this is exactly the, the experience. I can. You can, okay. <laughs> Maybe you can tell I'll me tell that. You how you did it. <laughs> well, because when you were telling me, I mean, I probably really can't tell you, but my experience of when you were talking this morning was every time you attempted to go outside yourself and get an answer, it was coming from the belief in guilt or the idea that something could be different or better or meet an external audience. And as you learn to not go with that voice and just say, no, I'm going to go with this feeling I have in the spirit. You were acknowledging, in a sense, the script is written, that the heart, that love is the only thing that is real. And nothing could be different because love is only real. So that's how I was kind of... But it was... Right. But yeah, you can't really explain how to do it, but that was the how. No, I... Yeah, that's exactly... But the, in that moment when I found out that... You know, because I have uh, like a, maybe the standard I have, a lot of it is some kind of pressure even, and it comes out when I do a project on my own. It really have a standard there that I want to achieve. And I kind of realize I cannot achieve that standard. Even if I can inform, I cannot in my heart. And suddenly the standard collapsed, good and bad, collapsed, right and wrong collapsed. Everything comes down to one thing is that feel true. And then I don't know why in that very moment I also felt, wow, nothing could be different and I couldn't make it different even if I try. I don't know how I realized mm -hmm. that, but it was it was very mm -hmm. profound. That's why I told you I feel I'm a different person now because not only I I feel I don't have a standard. I don't. I can't have a standard for anything I do. I can't have a standard for anything anybody else do either. Is their expression? I can't judge expressions. I can make their mm -hmm. expressions or my own different. Mm -hmm. The only mm -hmm. thing we can try to achieve is to be true. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Yeah, I've had that realization again the past couple of days with different people that have come into my life and they'll do things and I'm like how how could you, how can you do that how could you see that as being possibly helpful for your own state of mind let alone you know the rest of us but the only way for me to be happy is to somehow find a space where what they did is actually perfect and and it not not could ever be better, but it was the most helpful thing in the moment. So, like, I can't even describe how I got to that, but it's like, oh my God, that, wow, that, 
that's really good. And then a peace comes in, like a non-judgment. And if words of wisdom come out, it's definitely not of, of me. But yeah, it's from that place, it's perfect. So. Yeah, and it's also like comes out of this self-concept as if I did this project, so I have a control or say about how it should be. I realize mm -hmm. it, it has a life of its own. It's spirit who decide how the end result is, and I can't change. Mm -hmm. So is like everything else in life. You know, spirit is actually behind absolutely everything. And I can try, and anybody can try to, to say, to judge, this is not up to the standard, this is not good enough, or he is not good enough, I'm not good enough. But you can say however you want, it's just not going to be different. It's, it's mm -hmm. the spirit's way. Mm -hmm. And to, for us to accept yeah. that is peaceful. I found that even, you know, with this new direction, this must have been last spring. You know, we had this meeting in one of the um, Adelitas. I think you were there, and we thought something new's coming in. And the only thing that was clear was Fernanda was coming, remember? Yeah. And so Fernanda came. I went and picked her up at the airport and had all these ideas and lots of, she had hundreds, if not thousands, of ideas. And you know, most of the elders just kind of stepped out of the whole thing. We got made a few decisions like Spiri and I was so inspired and every time I tried to make a shift or a turn or whatever, it just never happened. And this is nine months later and probably in the most dedicated way in my life the last three days I've stepped back saying, I I can't do anything. I need to do nothing and and all of, and it was literally that afternoon, a bunch of the new ones that modern mystics or whatever, you know, just called me so pumped and excited that Spiri's taking off and they've got all these banners and Spiri TV and all these things. And I was just kind of like, wow, it really is under your timing. And not only is it under your timing, but if I think anything is ever going to come because of me, you're going to make sure that it doesn't so that I get, <laughs> I get the deeper lesson that nothing is of me, like no credit, no blame. And it was so inspiring to see that I definitely can't take credit for this. You know? Yeah, because if I take credit, I'm going to make it a little different. <laughs> I'm going to make it a little better. <laughs> Inform. <laughs> yeah. And then the movie would never get made. <laughs> yeah, it won't never get made. I can tell you, every day there's new <laughs> ideas coming in. Redesigning pine cones kind of thing. <laughs> Yeah. There is like a, you know, a, a feeling that when I was doing the movie, I can feel totally in love with, with the picture and with the characters, with myself, the spirit was, was there. And that is the purpose of the whole project. When that feeling is, is gone, you know, I have new ideas I want to put in, I want to do this, I want to do that. It feels very, very bad. It feels very stressful. I couldn't mm -hmm. make myself do it. So I think all of us just want that kind of feeling that we're, we, f we can feel so relaxed every day. Mm -hmm. You know, no worries, no concerns, and just feel peaceful and nothing is, can, be, can be wrong, nothing can be mm -hmm. right. It's just like a flow, and you, you do something out of some kind of pool, not because anything else, and you stop doing it when the pool stops, and just feel like it can truly be, be lived like that. Life can be lived like that. Yeah, I thought there'd come a point because I had Suzanne in mind after you and I talked this morning and I told her to be ready in case I just called her on to join us as we continued this conversation because we had a few coffee joinings this morning about this topic. So if it's good with you, I'd like to invite her up to just continue on and listen to this as we're going. Yeah. And by the way, this uh, some of you might see this. We might have to move it in a second, but... I, this was uh, built with, uh, who did I build this with? Oh, first Zach, and I built it, then Alexa and, uh, 
and Jess helped me, and you can see, I don't know if you can zoom in, probably not. <laughs> it says Spiri Studio on top, but it's our gingerbread house for our Christmas season, but you can move it now. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Suzanne. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just really deep. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Once again, can the words really, but I'll try, because I feel it, like listening to you, Francis, is, it's like when we heal, we don't heal alone, and uh, it's almost like we've been doing the same exact thing with completely different types of Backdrop. backdrops <laughs> or scenarios of the mind, but this perfection, you know, and anything that we think that we have to add to the awakening is our block. And, and that's what I've been coming through in the last probably year, is just really seeing that I had an agenda about awakening and it was sincere, like you being very sincere with wanting it to be a nice scene, right? But even that, and because it's dressed up in this sincerity and this wanting to serve, it's kind of confusing because it, but it's not confusing because it doesn't work, right? It just doesn't work over and over, but it's almost like we just keep going in that direction until all of a sudden it's like, I can't go in that direction anymore. I have to, I have to let go of my idea of what awakening even is. And, and I think because of the years of mind training and just being together in this, like so deeply together in this, that, that somehow there is this drop-off point. And I could feel it when you were sharing, and that's why it touched me, because I could feel it in myself. Like there's been this tremendous drop-off of an agenda of thinking that I actually can add something to speed things up, to make it better, to make whatever experience I'm having be closer to God, right? Because it's, that's what it's for, and I know that. It's like, that's my heart, that's why I came in, is because I had such a deep desire for God, but in our simplicity, right, and in our purity, without any additives, we're already there, right? And then, and then whatever's gonna happen, like you said, it takes no time. It's just right there. It's always just right there. But the minute, it's like it gets down to these nuances, the minute we think we have something, anything, whether it's silence, which was mine, like, you know, everybody just, can we all just be quiet together and just go deeply beyond these thoughts? But that was an additive. That was me thinking that I know something instead of skipping the steps of the purity of just the absolute quietness in the mind of, okay, whatever, what thy will be done, it's actually a deeper sense of thy will be done, you know, like for real, like, okay, even though it seems like a sincere attitude to have, it's in the way, it gets hijacked. And we were talking today about, about that, like, you know, there's nothing really, I need do nothing is such a powerful awareness. And it's such a deep trust. Like, really? Honestly? I can't make this choice. This is a better choice. I can't change this scene and make it better. You know, it's like it just, it's so profound. And so when you were sharing, I just totally resonated. Like, we are doing the same thing. You know, we're, we're moving together. And that's what I love about our mighty companions. We literally move together in the mind. It's not somebody over there doing something and somebody, it's like this deep experience of awakening is happening. We can feel it. But it's like, oh my gosh, Francis, that was so, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it was just like, I could just, my heart was just like, oh my God, what, what's happening? Oh, it's perfection in a way, like letting go of perfecting how this is to go. 
and to just be okay with who we are like like it's so simple yet it's so complicated because we're so conditioned <laughs> to to do it like we have something to offer you know so thank you for letting me get that out because <laughs> i was just like so much love you know like just just so how taken care of we are and 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 really how these patterns are so deep and and yet they're being erased you know they truly are being erased so that we can just be happy and be together and just the acceptance of the happy dream. <laughs> and, and we do, she's doing like, when you were first telling me this story, how you got this movie this morning, all for this letting go of control and seeing that nothing could be different. I had this flash of jealousy. I was like, I want something like that. And then I realized like my whole life <laughs> <laughs> is for that. But not only that, you're doing it like you're doing it for me. And Jesus says that in the course that every step your brother takes is for you so you don't even have to exactly repeat it yourself exactly. and yeah yeah jesus said that in a lesson a few days ago so beautiful it's like every brother who find christ brings your mind to me it's like celebrate when everybody when anyone have a moment of miracles or something because that brings yeah. your mind back to christ too yeah we could just like have pina coladas, let everybody wake up. For us. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it works. <laughs> We've had plenty of those. <laughs> Virgin, of course. <laughs> but I, there was something else that you said to me today that I don't know if you still want to go into, but you had this real realization that for 10 years you thought you were right mm -hmm. about something. Yeah, I thought I was right about the journey and that most everybody else was not doing it right. Yeah. That somehow everybody was caught in this serial adventures of the ego still, even on the spiritual journey, <clears throat> like, I'm going to write a book, or I'm going to be in this relationship, or I'm going to travel, or I'm going to make a movie, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And I would just sit back and think, what are you guys doing? Like, you know, I really felt like the silence and the inner contemplation was the path, and I think I've probably been in the cave many many lifetimes and this is the lifetime to surrender and I heard Jesus tell me and this is after 10 years of deep mind training like let go and let me have you let me use you how I need to use you you have an agenda you think you know how this goes and then it just I got to see just all of this this veil of like almost like a, a veil, uh, like a block between me and you, me and you. With the idea of silence, kind of like a... The idea, uh, the agenda, yeah. really. And it's not that that isn't still just resonant in my heart, it is. It's a part of my life. But it was almost like it was a veil keeping me from mm -hmm. actually the steps that Jesus lays out in The Course of Miracles. And one of those steps is to accept the happy dream. Well, this, I'll set it up for everybody because this was a big part. When Francis was up here and we were all together, we had this big meeting and Suzanne, I think a little bit, Jane Marie too, they, they kind of had this memory of a convent that they wanted the monastery to be like a real quiet place. And, and we were getting clear on the purpose of the monastery and somehow David, I don't know, sensed that or something and saw the struggle that was going to occur if you try to bring heaven to earth, which mm -hmm. is bring silence to Mm -hmm. And yet the monastery is a place where you're, you're done through. There may be a slightly quieter environment mm -hmm. to reach true quiet. And something popped in your mind around trying to go for heaven and a happy dream. Maybe mm -hmm. you could share like mm -hmm. why that was so significant mm -hmm. for you. Well, it's been happening for the last, probably the, deeply the last six months. When I heard, when I was at the temple in Mexico, I heard that that there was some part of my mind that was fixated, was fixating on some type of a agenda around silence. And so I could feel a shift happening. And when I was at the monastery and we had that big meeting and David said, we were comparing it to a festival, to a silent retreat. And if you see them as different, then you've bit the bait, right? And, and I actually was seeing them as different. One was much more attractive to me than the other. And one I felt would take us home quicker than say a festival, so I, so it was kind of like the, the monastery was taken completely out of my hands in that moment. There was this tremendous release 
like I didn't even know it was there. You don't know, you know, you don't know what mm -hmm. you don't know. And that's what I think is so powerful about marrying in, in community is I don't know how I ever would have uncovered that. You know, I don't know how I ever would have done it without without the help of these symbols that are just a reflection of my inner prayer for awakening. But it's like, oh my God, I, I went down to the cabin and I just sat there like something just shifted completely in my mind, like a deeper acceptance of thy will be done. Truly thy will be done. I don't need to interfere. I don't need to get myself involved. It's like a deep acceptance of what's being offered in the moment is the most powerful thing for your awakening. It doesn't matter if you're scrubbing a toilet, sitting in silence, or teaching a hundred people. It's like, it's all laid out for us. The script is written. <laughs> it's like, how simple is that? You know, and, and yet, if there's one personal idea that you think you know, it wipes everything out in a way. Maybe not everything, but it obscures the true depth of your own happiness and your own awareness of this moment. Like, what's better than this right now? Would it be sitting in a cave? No, because guess what? This is what's happening right now. And I'm so in love with Francis, and I'm so in love with Jason, and I'm so in love with, it's like, how can you beat that, you know? With a thought, oh, this is a distraction. It's just more shows. Oh, I should be out sitting in the canyon in quiet. So I'm really grateful for, how this goes, mm. you know, because your prayer will be answered. Like Francis' prayer was answered. It's like the simplicity of who I am is enough. Right? I could even ask, did you, did you make a movie? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? Did you make a movie? Because <laughs> <laughs> I hear no in my mind, like, like you, you get to this point where you, you do all this stuff and then someone says, did you do it? You're like, no. No. The right no, answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like all these scenes, all these scenes keep passing through <laughs> our lives, right? These scenes after scenes after scenes after scenes, but really, there's nothing ever really going on. <laughs> it's like coming into that realization. It's beautiful. <laughs> Remember, Jason, I, <laughs> I remember that uh, when we started this project, uh, before we started, we were in the Apple store to, to get something for the room, uh, for the equipment. And I was right at the beginning of the project. You and I said, standing in the Apple store, we said, let's set a prayer for this project. We want to use this project to undo right and wrong, the belief in right and wrong. Do you still remember that? <laughs> I feel it when you say it. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah, I remember that very clearly. We were standing there holding hands and saying, we want to undo this believing right or wrong. And I feel, I feel it's a blessing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That we can do it in a right way or a wrong way. Yeah, good or worse way, better. Yeah, all of it. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because it, the hardest part for me through the whole journey with the movie was feeling like I had so much, I get tense when I say it, to offer. <laughs> I know. Uh, and I'm I like... time my job. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I had to step back so you could step in and somehow that was the complimentary. It's like every um, time Jason have, wants to offer something, I have to say, no. <laughs> <laughs> and, it was and I feel so abandoned every time. That's so beautiful, though. That's like any time we think, we actually believe we have something to offer. It's like it's being shown to us. Like there's such a purification with that, right? Well, this is. Yeah, this is it. This is the line. You gotta, you gotta love this. You find it difficult to accept the idea you need gives so little <laughs> to receive so much. <laughs> It's like it just hit me even more when I read And it is very hard for you to realize it is not personally insulting that your contribution and the Holy Spirit's are so extremely disproportionate. <laughs> it's very humiliating to the ego. 
you are still convinced that your understanding is a powerful contribution to the truth. And that's what I thought with the movie. <laughs> and makes it what it is. Yeah, we have emphasized that you need understand nothing. Mm. Salvation is easy just because it asks nothing mm. you cannot give right now. Mm. So it's funny, I did come to the same lesson as you, but from a different, <laughs> mm. a different way. It's funny, it's been our lesson even from the beginning, because I remember, I remember, you know, in the beginning of our assignment, you'd be in your room or something. I mean, this is years ago, so this is, you're definitely a new, different person, but, <laughs> and I'd be out there, and I'd be like, why aren't you coming out? Come on, come join with the, join. I feel so comfortable being yeah. on my own, like, very too comfortable being in my own quiet zone. <laughs> Jason was like, come out, be with people, share about your miracles. Like, I don't have miracles to share. <laughs> yes, come talk, talk to everybody. <laughs> and somehow it, like, it's kind of flipped now in the end where I'm, I have to just be comfortable being in my room <laughs> by myself. <laughs> now you're fully, com you know, <laughs> running movies, ready to go on tour. It's, it's just amazing how it all works. <laughs> together, really. <laughs> wow. Okay, I did not plan all this <laughs> for the show. Mm. Humility is strength in this sense only, that to recognize and accept the fact that you don't, do not know is to recognize and accept the fact that He does know. Mm. You are not sure that He will do His part because you have never yet done mm. yours completely. Yeah. Mm. You cannot know how to respond to what you do not understand. Be tempted not in this, and do not confuse your role with this, for this will never bring, with his, for this will never bring peace to anyone. Mm. Let him offer you his strength and his perception to be shared through you. Mm. So, I don't know, I feel the three of us maybe could just keep going, but I kind of feel mm. this is a natural ending unless you have more. Francis, that you feel. Now it's good to see you, Suzanne. Good. It's what? Good to see Suzanne <laughs> there. <laughs> it's good to be seen. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the cave I come. <laughs> Thanks for what? For pulling it out of me because uh, yeah, this morning when, when Jason called, I mean, yesterday we talked and I said, I don't know, I don't think so. I don't think I can share with words. Mm -hmm. um, never shared it with, with anybody in words. So, so, but he pulled me out today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we got to bring you too, so thank you. I was on my way back to the monastery and he pulled me to campus. <laughs> It's like, and normally I would have said, no, I've been full on, I need to go and be in quiet, but I had such an opening now. It's like, okay, I'll go to Camus. And, and I mean, I didn't expect this, but it's like just to be, just to have that openness to thy will be done and that it's really not up to me. And it, there's such a rest in that. There's like this deep kind of, I don't know, just everything is as it should be. And that it's not up to me. That's a lot of release of mm. stress and manipulation in the mind, even for God, you know, like as if mm. that's going to help me along. So there is a, a real kind of um, peacefulness here now with mm. me that wasn't there before because I thought I need to go and be quiet and it's like, okay, now I'm going to be here. So that's beautiful. Thank you, everyone. The script was written as a real deep idea for me right now, and I'm loving it. So I love these kind of talks. And mm. thank you for joining with me from the bottom up, mm. the movie into the mystic. So <laughs> maybe I could have a gallery view and I can, I like waving to everybody. And 
Thank you, Francis. Thank you, Susan. <laughs> <Is> Eric. <laughs> Susan Jameson, Gail. Beautiful. Half the people are on Spiri.ai and half are on Zoom, so we're in our transition phase here. Mm. Like, uh, there's Dan. Oh, there's La Casa. <laughs> Francis, Christopher, yeah. Eric. Oh, yeah, wow. Eric's there. Dan. Dennis. Hi, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> David just finished a gathering in Holland, so he's probably resting and then flying mm -hmm. back to Mexico in a couple days. So we'll see what happens next Sunday. But yeah, thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs>